So, one of the most important schools of thought in Indian philosophy is the Sankhya system. And the way this system functions is by dividing all of universe into two fundamental categories, consciousness and matter. And when talking about matter, the Sankhya system states that all matter is a string of three strands. These are known as the three gunas or the three attributes or the three tendencies. They are Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. The gunas are not perceived but are inferred from their effects. Let's understand all of them beginning with Tamas. The Tamas gun can be described as the one responsible for inertia or inactivity. The Rajas gun can be described as the one responsible for motion or activity. And the Sattva gun can be described as the one responsible for balancing or self-maintenance. Geometrically, it would look something like this, with Rajas and Tamas on each side and Sattva at the top. One way to understand them is by relating them with the atomic theory. The atomic theory states that atom is made up of three particles, electron, proton and neutron. The only difference is that these are not particles but rather tendencies or attributes. The gunas have also been defined in the form of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, where Brahma is the creator, hence denoting Rajas, Vishnu is the sustainer or the protector, denoting Sattva, and Shiva is the destroyer denoting Tamas. The three gunas are never separate. They support one another and intermingle with one another. These three attributes are present in all matter in different proportions. There might be a dominance of one attribute, but nothing that can be defined as matter is devoid of any attribute. In some, Tamas is dominant, some have Rajas as the dominant one, and Sattva is the dominating one in some. Often people relate Rajas with good and Tamas with bad. This largely happens due to the thinking patterns we have developed. But this approach is an incorrect one. We can work up an analogy by taking an example of a car. There is an accelerator and a brake in a car. Now the accelerator is responsible for the movement and hence denotes Rajas. The brake on the other hand is accountable for restricting all movement denoting Tamas. The driver uses them depending on the situation and by balancing between them thus denotes Sattva. The brake is as important as the accelerator. Without accelerator, there is no movement and without brake, there is no stopping. The attribute of balancing is the important one. In a similar way, the ability of destruction is as important as the ability of production. The question then is of balance. See the reason we are talking about these is to better the understanding of our tendencies and with better understanding comes clarity of thought and with clarity of thought arise better actions. For according to the trend of our desires and the nature of our souls, each one of us generally becomes of a corresponding character. Similar to the Sankhya system, Plato stated that the soul is made up of three parts. The Logos, which is related to reason and regulates other parts, analogous to Sattva. The Thymos, which is related to anger, analogous to Tamas. The Eros, which is related to one's desires, analogous to Rajas. To explain these, I would like to present to you the chariot allegory from Phaedrus by Plato. There is a chariot with two horses and a charioteer. The charioteer represents intellect, reason or the part of the soul that must guide the soul to truth. One horse represents desires or passionate nature while the other represents anger or the soul's irrational passions. Similar allegory can be seen in the Kart Upanishad. Know the soul to be the master of the chariot, the body, chariot, the intellect, the charioteer, and the mind, the reins. The senses, they say, are the horses, the objects, the roads. The chariot allegory perfectly captures the essence of these tendencies. Let's look at this geometrically. Here are the two horses and here is the charioteer. If either of the horse moves at a faster or a slower pace, there will be imbalance. To maintain the balance, both the horses need to move at the same pace. Here, the figure we end up with is analogous to the triangle we saw earlier. Now that the three attributes have been described, let's look at the question of justice. Plato states that justice is harmony between the three different parts of our souls with reason ruling. The aim then is to form a harmonious bond between the two horses and the charioteer, with the charioteer guiding the chariot towards the truth. These attributes exist everywhere in life. 
in our actions, our understanding, the food we eat, the thoughts we have and other areas of life as well. And with the existence of these attributes, exists the need for justice, that is, harmony between all of them. Three kinds of understanding have been explained by Shri Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. The understanding which knows action and non-action, what ought to be done and what ought not to be done, what is to be feared and what is not to be feared, what binds and what frees the soul, that understanding is of the nature of goodness. That by which one knows in a mistaken way the right and the wrong, what ought to be done and what ought not to be done, that understanding is of the nature of passion. That which, enveloped in darkness, conceives as right what is wrong and sees all things in a perverted way contrary to the truth, that understanding is of the nature of dullness. At last, I would like to leave you with a few words from Socrates. Regarding justice, I do not mean as to external action but concerning that which is really internal, relating to the man himself and those things which are properly his own, not allowing any principle in himself to attempt to do what belongs to others nor the principles to be pragmatical engaging in one another's affairs, but in reality well establishing his own proper affairs and holding the government of himself, adorning himself and becoming his own friend and attuning those three principles in the most natural manner as three musical strings, bass, tenor and treble or whatever other may chance to intervene. Thus, he will be led to combine all these together and become of many an entire one, temperate and attuned, and in that manner to perform whatever is done, either in the way of acquiring wealth, or concerning the management of the body, or any public affair or private bargain, and in all these cases to account and call that action just and handsome which always sustains and promotes this habit, and to call that knowledge which presides over this action wisdom but to call that an unjust action which dissolves this habit and the opinion which presides over this folly.